podcast episode four huzzah the crafty chat podcast is a fortnightly podcast which talks about knitting and crochet and yarny wonderfulness all while i enjoy a cup of tea it's my crafty mug you see so much fun like I said, my name is Hannah. I am the host, if you will, of this podcast. I'm coming at you today from Frankfurt in Germany, although unless I post this on Wednesday, I am recording this on the 21st. I usually post on a Thursday, but I am traveling back to England tomorrow to see my family for Christmas fun times. So yeah. thank you very much for watching, regardless if you're new or if you're just coming back again and again and again and again. Much appreciated. Links to all of my social media can be found in the description box below. I am the corner of craft in most places other than Twitter because apparently my business name is one letter too long, so that's irritating, but yes. Um, and we do also have a Ravelry group, a Crafty Chat podcast Ravelry group. Link to that can also be found in the description box below. Over there, I just like to have a nice little chat with you all and see what you're all working on, as well as all of my show notes are over there. And one thing you will notice if you are a returning viewer is my hair is a new colour. I decided to re-dye it for Christmas. Um, I've stopped bleaching my roots, so I just put more black on my roots, and then I put pink through all of my hair, and my hair was blue before. So now it's bluish purple. But yes, I just thought I would address that before we get too far into the video. Anyway, on to whips and hose. I actually don't have any half objects this week, which is a first. Um, also, Christmas jumper, yes. Not hand knitted, obviously. So my first work in progress is this doily that I showed you last week that I said I needed to work on. So the little cute little star charm I got from my friend Anna at Pixel Pearls. That's where I was last time. So I was on these round ones. Um, and so I've done a few rows more. It's really difficult to count rows in doilies. So one, two, four, five, six rows more, I think. Um, it's taking a while. I was really tired on Monday. Ooh, excuse me, I'll just throw it on the floor. I was really tired on Monday when we went to Knit Night Crochet, my um, knitting group I go to, Pints and Pearls in Frankfurt, and um, I was really tired and got with, kept getting really fed up with it, but I feel much better about it now, and I did a couple of rounds yesterday and feel much better about it. Um, this is the Mantilla Doily by Coates Design Team. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It is, I'd say it's one for um, an intermediate crocheter, you need to be relatively confident. Um, it's not difficult by any means. You just take it one row at a time and you keep going and hoping for the best. Um, but it can be a little confusing, mainly because I have to read the directions a couple of times before it sinks in, what I'm meant to be doing. But it's not complicated. It looks more difficult than it is. It looks super intricate. I have a picture up on my Ravelry page now because I'm trying to get better at that. But yes, I'm using a two millimeter hook. I always use a two millimeter hook. It's the smallest size crochet hook that I have that has a handle on it. And it's just a prim hook. I got given a set of crochet hooks in a case, which I will quickly grab. So three years ago for Christmas, I requested for a set of crochet hooks um, and a case to keep them all in. The case is by Clover. The Velcro is going. I need a new case. And all of my hooks are by Prim. Um, and this has possibly been the most used Christmas present I've ever received. I'm not sure if I like prim hooks that that much because here's one I've used a lot, my 3.5mm, especially lately. Um, I don't know if you can see a cover up my face. Like stuff's coming off of the hook. It doesn't interfere with my hand, it doesn't interfere with the crochet, it's just not very attractive to look at, you know. And I could and I can like pick it off bit by bit, but that's no fun. Um, but they're like good quality hooks. The handle's very comfortable in the hand. I've got from a six millimeter all the way down to a two millimeter. So I've got two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, and then a six. And it's very useful. But yes, that is the hook I'm using. And the crochet cotton I've got 
It's just one I bought from the market that I used to live in or the market near to where I used to live. And it's just, I don't know what size crochet cotton it is. I have no idea. I'm not very knowledgeable, knowledgeable about crochet cotton considering the amount of doilies I've knit and crocheted even over the years. I'm not very knowledgeable about knowledgeable about si uh, sizes of crochet cotton but it's a nice colour and how I store my crochet which is prop or how I store my doilies which is probably terrible for it but I just keep it tucked inside so this will be going back to my parents with me and hopefully I'll finish this off over Christmas yes I'm also going to take my tea bag out of my tea because I didn't bring a cup over oh. I'm still getting through the tea advent calendar that my sister got me um, sorry if you can see any, any hair dye on my hairline. You obviously know this isn't my natural colour, so I'm not too heartbroken about it. Anyway, um, yeah, I think today is the breakfast special once again, which is what I was drinking last time. Because I only have 13 different flavours. But yes, anyway, the other thing which was on the floor that I'm working on, and you'll see more of this bag in a second, because it's... Well, when I say in a second, I mean like, later on. Um, this is my Cozy Memories blanket. I don't actually have a bag now. I have a project bag, people. I haven't had one in such a long time. But it's my pair of memories. And so I've decided that this is as wide as I want it to be. It's 18 squares wide and I've finally started on the second row. So for this, I'm using fingering weight yarn. I'm using a pattern by Kemper Ray of the um, junk, of junk yarn. And I think before I was on this brown square. Now, I don't know what all of these yarns are but I do know who they're from. And as long as I know, that's all that matters. I'm calling this yellow square my Hufflepuff square because I'm Hufflepuff. This one reminds me of ice cream, which is delightful. But these, and then I've got this one in the square above. I don't know if I've been casting on the bottom edge right. I'm doing it where you, so I'm quite new to knitting, for those who don't know. I know what I know, you know. Um, but I'm doing the one where you knit into it and then put it on. Um, so not a long tail cast on, which is what my mum taught me. So this is new to me. And I did watch some YouTube videos on how to do it, but I have a feeling I might have been putting it on the needle the wrong way around because at my bottom row, uh, what's a good example? Who knows? Come on, focus. Do your thing. So my bottom row is really loopy in comparison. To the rest of it but you know they're all like that so at least I'm consistent I'm using a 2.5 millimeter well I'm using 2.5 millimeter dpn's I'm only I'm using two dpn's obviously because it's all I need I am um, in my bag I have the stitch markers that um, Amy from Periscoping Sisters gave me as well as uh, an additional TARDIS that I made because I bead weave as well, for those unaware, because I haven't done much bead weaving lately. Um, and then also the teeny tiny pair of scissors that she sent. But I also have a 1.5mm crochet hook, which is a nice weighty one actually. Um, and these are just cheap off e uh, Amazon, my sister got them. And then my cheap DPNs, because apparently I don't spend money on things. Um, but how I'm picking up my stitches, and I don't know if this is right, but I'm literally just like putting the hook between the rows, pulling the thread through and then putting that on a needle, doing it again. It's probably an easier way of doing it, but it's working, you know? I mean, my first few aren't very tidy, but I got into the hang of it, you know? And once again, I watched a video on that because I'm new to this whole shebang. I'm a crochet girl in my heart, but I am loving knitting. Um, and I've been on a huge knitting kick. So I got four squares done yesterday whilst watching, um, well, some just whilst watching Netflix, and then we watched um, Critical Role, which is a group of voice actors who play Dungeons and Dragons, um, and they stream on Twitch, which is a, like a live streaming website, and then they upload it onto YouTube on a Tuesday. So my boyfriend and I watched that for four hours as I, crochet, as I knit a few squares, and we had dinner in between, and blah. Um, but yes, it was very tense. They had to fight something big and scary. So tense. It's okay. I won't say any spoilers in case anyone else watches. Mm. So now we're on to finished things. 
Like I said, I don't have that many works in progress, but I have a lot of finished things. I've been very busy doing Christmas crafting. So, my first finished things is what I was working on the last time I podcasted, or last time I recorded a podcast, and it's this. So these socks are for my kind of almost mother-in-law, my boyfriend's mum. And it is just a plain, simple vanilla sock, 2.5 millimeter DPNs, 64 stitches. Um, I might have to go back, go down to a 2.25 at some point though, but Fish Lips Kiss Heel, they don't match stripe wise. It was the second pair of socks that I got out of the ball of yarn. So I was a bit worried I wouldn't have enough yarn, but I had enough yarn. This is Regia, both the body and the heels, toes and cuffs is Regia. So it's Regia, this bit is col uh, colour 03726 in the exotic colourway. And then heels, toes and cuffs is the Baby Smiles, which is the small ball of yarn you can get, um, in 01053 Sky Blue. And that was the final pair of Christmas knitting socks. I had to do and I still have the ends to weave in on one pair oh no on just one sock and I don't know why I haven't done it yet but I will do it before they get given I've got a while before they get given so it's okay because we're not going to see them on Christmas day I'll plop that down there with my blanket and then this is another work in progress that I had last week and it was for this little guy. Now, if you've been subscribed to my channel, you'll notice and recognize this reindeer um, because I actually had a tutorial for him on Sunday. And it's the first tutorial that took me more than one day to film. And it's the first tutorial that my computer had a hissy fit when I tried to edit it because it was such a long tutorial. So this is my little crochet reindeer. I have two of them because I'm giving these to my kind of almost cousins um, who are two little boys. One of them is almost two and one of them is almost four, I think. I'm not sure now I've said that, but anyway. I've used Stylecraft acrylic yarn, which is my favorite acrylic yarn. It's really not that expensive. And then these are just some safety eyes. I don't know what size they are. I lost the top of the label. So the pattern I used, for those who don't want to watch my tutorial, that's fine, is the pony pattern, which is um, by All About Ami, as in All About Ami Gurumi, which is this. This is Ami Gurumi. And um, she has amazing patterns on there. She even has some knitting patterns if you're not into crochet. And it is the pony pattern. And the pony pattern came about in 2014. I kept saying 2004 last time. I'm definitely meant 2014 um, because it was the year of the horse. So she released this pattern and I just modified it. So on my project page, I've written it, my pattern for the nose and the antlers. And I should add the tail actually because I forgot that was a dentition. Um, but I basically made the same head, body, legs, ears, and then I made up Anna's nose and a tail. Because reindeer have different tails to horses. And I just didn't put a mane on him either, obviously, because reindeer don't have manes. And then, I told you I have a lot of finished objects. And they're predominantly crochet. In fact, they're all crochet other than those socks. But a little crochet kick, it's been really nice. Um, same pattern, but unicorn. Um, instead of crocheting the mane, how she crochets the mane, I just attached just strands of yarn for both the mane and the tail. Boop. And then I added a horn, which is the unicorn horn pattern by Sarah M. Jones. And I, once again, style craft yarn. Can't go wrong. Um, this, the mane... I think has some scraps that aren't style craft and the horn is actually a mini that I was sent um, so it's this one is like sock yarn fingering weight yarn and I used a two point either a 2.5 or a two millimeter hook I can't remember but because I used a 3.5 millimeter hook for this one it turned out much smaller than the other unicorn I've made which is this guy here um, and that one I used double knit yarn for the horn but this one I couldn't have done it would have been far too big 
and actually he has a friend. You see? And I've just taken a couple of pictures of them so that I should be able to update my Ravelry page. And this one has a bigger head than this one, and I'm not quite sure why, but I went with like a pinky purpley theme and then a blue and greeny icy theme, but also has some purple in. And this, these are also for my kind of cousins. My mum requested me to make them, so they're not for the same. These are for two little girls. These are two, for two little boys. I'm not trying to be sexist. I just know that the two little boys aren't particularly into unicorns. Just saying. But yeah, I'm having a really hard time coming to terms with the fact that this one has to be given away to the point where I kind of want to take some yarn with me to my parents and see if I can whip another one up. Um, because this one's face is so cute. I'm not saying this one isn't cute, I'm just saying this one is really cute, you know? But this is what happens when you make people things. And then the final thing that I've made is a bit weird, and I accept the fact it's a little bit weird. And a little bit weird is a little bit okay. But I crocheted a Christmas ornament for my dad. And it's a gherkin. So there's apparently a tradition in Germany, although I've spoken to some German people and they've never heard of this tradition, so. But apparently, you hang the, somebody hangs a gherkin on the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve and whoever finds it gets an extra present. Apparently, or something like that. But I just thought it was hilarious. Um, and I thought that my dad would appreciate a gherkin tree ornament. And then I just used some baker's twine that... So my friend's wedding invitation came, which is very exciting. I'm bridesmaid in April, so yes, I'm going. Um, but it had this red and white baker's twine wrapped around it, and I thought, hmm, perfect. So I crocheted a chain and then attached it to the top for to hang on the tree. But yeah, this is a gherkin pattern by uh, Twinkie Chan, who... I love whom I love, should I say. Um, she makes such amazing patterns. I wanted to make one of these last year, but she posted the pattern on Christmas Eve and I didn't have any of my supplies with me. Um, so this is a Stylecraft yarn again. This is the Special DK. Can't remember what color it's in. Forest? Something like that. But it's kind of like a two-tone. It's got like a dark green and a light green. So I thought it was perfect for a gherkin. And it's a really easy pattern to make um, if you're new to crochet still. It's all double crochet or single crochet if you're using US terms. And then every so often you whack in a double treble for the lumps. Um, and then shape it following the pattern instructions. But it's amazing and I cannot wait to give him this. Because I feel like he'll love it. Because everybody has some aspect of their present being handmade. My mum, I made some stitch markers, which I probably should have shown. But I'll take a picture at some point. But my mum has some stitch markers that I made. And then my dad's got the gherkin, and then other people have socks, and blah, blah, blah. I only made people socks if they're the same size feet as me, because I figured that it would be a bit difficult to do it otherwise. But I love Twinkie Chan patterns, and I've got both of her books. And I love her patterns because they're so easy to read, and they explain everything really well. And she actually has a YouTube channel as well, for those who aren't aware. And um, she's actually got some tutorials on her YouTube channel and she explains everything very thoroughly. And she crochets so fast, I always think she speeds it up, but she doesn't, well she speeds up some, but she crochets so fast that I'm just like, how can you crochet so fast? Something else that I would like to share that isn't something that I have made, but it's something my mum made, I think last year she made it. Um, for those who don't know what this is, this is a hat, obviously. My mum knits, obviously. Um, and this is a knitted hat. And it's a Christmas pudding. So in Britain, after you eat, and possibly other places, I'm not sure, but definitely Britain, after you eat Christmas dinner, oh, I made the leaves. I forgot I made the leaves. I'm a bit more comfortable with crochet than my mum is. So I made the leaves. Um, yeah, after you eat your Christmas dinner, you have a Christmas pudding, and you put brandy on it, and you set it on fire and it's just I'm not quite sure what's in a Christmas pudding a lot of dried fruit and a bit of flour and butter and whatnot um but yeah my mum made this Christmas pudding hat which I love it's got a nice bit of colour work around it and yes 
I just had to share that with you because I thought it was delightful. I kind of want to wear it, but at the same time, my hair, I dyed yesterday, and so I don't want to ruin the white part of the hat. That would be so intense and so sad. So when I was first started getting into knitting podcasts a couple of months ago, my friend Virginia recommended to me the Yarn Gathering podcast, inadvertently recommended it to me, and I kind of got a bit hooked and started watching back episodes. And I saw that maybe last Christmas, that's how many back episodes I watched, last Christmas she bought some Ali and Carlos yarn. We're into fattening up my stash, by the way. I forgot, I always forget to transition into the next bit. And some people are just like, and now it's time for blah, blah, blah. And I always forget and I'm just, I just go. Um, but she, another project then. She uh, was talking about some Ali and Carlos yarn that she got. And I don't know if it's just because she had it at Christmas time, but it made me think of Christmas colours. So, this is my only fast, fash stashing was what I was going to say. Stash fattening. I've done this year. This year. This fortnight. I've done far more stash fattening in the past few months than I thought I would. But, um, this past fortnight, this is all I've got. Except for I've got some yarn to give to my mum because I bought her the Ali and Carlos knitted Christmas balls, which really makes me laugh that people call them Christmas balls. Because I call them ball balls, B-A-U-B-L-E-S, ball balls. But no, Christmas balls. So yeah, I bought my mum some yarn to go for that. And my auntie expressed interest in learning how to knit socks. So I got her some DPNs and some regia as well. So she has no excuse. But anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. So my stash fattening for myself. Oh, and I participated in Secret Santa and bought some more Ana and Carlos for my friend. But yes, this is the Ana and Carlos. This is Colorway 03657, which I believe is the Summer Nights, Summer Island. I was going to say Summer Nights, and then for some reason, Summer Island happened in my head. So now I'm not sure, but I think it's Summer Nights. But I know it's like got the word summer in the title of the of the yarn but it makes me so much think of Christmas because it's like sure it's orange which isn't a Christmassy color but it's like orangey red you know and if this camera would cooperate here we go so it's like orangey red and green and it's got some light blue and some cream in it so I'm going to pair it with this which is just some really cheap Aldi yarn that I got um last year when I was learning to knit socks because here in Germany you can buy yarn in Aldi it's great fun but focus back on the face even I can see in my non glassed glasses glasses my non glasses wearing state that was out of focus um anyway and then I heard loads of people talking about a Christmas Eve cast on and before I get into that, I'm going to be back in a second because my camera's going to cut out any moment. Ugh. I can't believe how tired I look today. Anyway, um, I hate that my camera can only record for like half an hour or so and I didn't want to cut myself off in the middle of talking. Um, so yeah, I heard people talking about a Christmas Eve cast on and I didn't know what it was. I'm very new to the knitting world. I'm extremely new to the knitting podcast world, so I didn't know what it was. So... I did some googling and found out that it was a Little Bobbins Knits idea and how she likes to cast on a pair of socks on Christmas Eve because she has such a pleasant memory associated with the socks, which I really like the idea. So, this is going to be my Christmas Eve cast on and I'm very excited about that. I've got my DPNs all ready to go, although I did do a bit of uh, self-indulgent Christmas shopping for myself online and bought myself some higher higher sharps in um, circular needles so I could try magic loop I don't know if I want to try that on these socks or stick to what I know I'm getting a bit stressed about it but I got my tape measure in there, I got my darning needles in there, I got my DPMs in there, I got my scissors in my other project bag. I'm all set. So they will be cast on 
on Christmas Eve, which is coincidentally when I'm also going to be getting my hair cut. So this is the last time you're going to see my hair come past my chest um, and hit the bottom of my brassiere, which is so impressive how long my hair grows considering how much damage I do to it through bleaching, although I have stopped bleaching. But I think I'm going to get like a ridiculous amount cut off because it's really thin now, which is sad. Um, anyway, so this Christmas Eve cast on is in one of my new project bags and it's for, and it's in this project bag. So my friend Virginia, who is such a lovely person, we went to a fabric fair in the beginning of October, I think. And I saw this fabric and I said, oh my goodness, please can you buy that because it's amazing. And then we decided to split these half and half and then I don't sew. So I just kind of wanted it because I thought it was amazing. I just went along to the fabric fair for fun. And it's these amazing pugs in hats, coats and scarves. And I love it so much. And she surprised both myself and Becky with, Becky who is Soprano Knits and my neighbor who also goes to my knit night with these amazing bags. And it's her first attempt at making project bags and they're incredible. And they've got this really nice light blue triangle fabric inside and it's a nice little zip and a little pulley doodad on it and oh, I enjoy this bag immensely. It's so lovely and it, it sits by itself which is also useful and I just love this fabric. It's incredible. And I like having project bags. Like my mum didn't have project bags, but she used to store knitting projects in plastic bags, which was all very well and good until the needles poke through, you know? And then the other project bag I got, this one I got, this, this project bag I got first, and this is from Jessie. And she messaged me a few weeks ago and said, hey, I make something, can I send you it? She didn't tell me what she made. She just, I, I was just like, yes, I am intrigued now. And then a few days later in the post, first off, amazing shipping from the US. That's incredible. So fast. And when I got this project bag in the post, oh, you can't see the bottom because I've got stuff in it. And it's crafty chat. And then look, it's kind of similar to my logo. It's got the teacup and the yarn and the needles and then... No one's stealing this bag from me got a nice handle on it once again zip and it's got a, a nice big pocket in it which is what I'm storing my needles and my crochet hook and my notions um, and this is what my blankets living in and I got a bundle of minis in here which is very exciting and my blanket and I mean I know I won't be able to store it in here forever but so both of my project bags are gifts and both of the lovely ladies who were kind enough to give them to me don't as yet sell them. Although I don't know about Virginia's intentions on selling her bags, but I know that Jessie did talk about maybe in the future, but is getting Christmas out of the way first. And look on the cut, it's got little, little wee snowflakes. I love this. So in a fortnight, I've gone from having zero project bags to having two project bags. And that project bag from Jessie arrived the day after I filmed my last crafty chat. So that was a little frustrating. But yes, that was my fattening up my stash, even though I fattened it up by one ball of yarn that I'm going to knit almost immediately. And I'm really excited to cast on, I kind of want to cast on in advance, but what's the point in that? Also, another thing that my friend Virginia has lent to me to read while I'm away over Christmas is this book. And it's Knitting Rules by Stephanie Pearl McPhee. And apparently it's an amazing, it's an amazing book for people into knitting. And it tells you about the things you need to know. And I'm excited to read this. I'm going to read it on the plane and read it in bed and read it when I go places. And maybe read it as I knit. I don't know if that's a thing that's possible. I've never tried it before. I've tried it with crochet before, but that isn't possible because I actually have to look at my crochet when I read. And my goodness, that was a lot of words. And I didn't mean I have to look at my crochet when I read. I meant I have to look at my crochet while I crochet. Sometimes 
I just speak too quickly and then words happen. But anyway, now we are getting on to podcaster recommendations. And I have three podcaster recommendations for you. These are all new to me this past fortnight, actually. Um, first off is the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. Um, Becky Soprano Knits on Instagram and Ravelry and who hosts the Stringing It Together podcast um, recommended Once Upon a Corgi to me. Um, and my goodness, her corgis are so cute. I'm not a dog person. I'm not... I don't hate dogs. I enjoy looking at dogs. I can't stop playing with my hair because I feel so soft because I dyed it yesterday. I enjoy looking at dogs. I enjoy when they are calm and not like, bah! Basically. I am the same with cats. I like the cats when they're nice and calm. I don't like it when they're in my face. Um, but yes, her corgis are absolutely beautiful. And I just kind of want to... Have you seen that meme that's just like, is it a corgi or a loaf of bread? I enjoy that. Sorry, that was completely off topic. Anyway, um, Once Upon a Corgi hosts a knitting podcast. Um, very talented, very lovely, nice calm voice. Things you look for in a podcast that you don't really realise. It's quite aesthetically pleasing. All sorts. My voice is going and I'm just going to take a moment to pause. My next podcaster recommendation is the Little Bobbins Knits podcast. I think it's Little Bobbins Knits. I think that's what... Yeah, because... Yeah. And the reason I've... Well, I've heard about her before. Um, but obviously when you're first dipping your toe into the world of podcasts, um, there's so many of them, it's kind of a bit like, bah, bombarded! Um, anyway, that's how I felt. But yes, I'm just gradually getting around to the old favourites that people like. I'm saying the podcast are the old favourites, I'm not saying the podcasters are old. Obviously. But yes, um, once again, lovely soothing voice. She is also from Britain, which is nice. It makes me, you know, nice and warm and fuzzy and reminds me of home because sometimes you get homesick, you don't even realise it. But um, yes, very talented knitter as well. It has fallen into the crochet rabbit hole, as people are calling it, of the granny stripe. And um, has an amazing, I want to say that her dog is a chihuahua. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a long haired chihuahua who is so beautiful. And in her last podcast, this chihuahua was the snuggliest little thing I've ever seen. I just wanted to give it a huge cuddle and just be like, it's okay, I won't ever move. And then the final podcast is the Junk Yarn podcast. And it took me a while to get around to this because I've heard about her a lot as well because I love her yarns and I follow her on Instagram. And I think I'm also friends with her in Ravelry. And yeah, but it just took me a while to get around to watching the podcast. Like I say, these things happen. And... Once again, lovely voice, very soothing, very talented, and yeah. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot about all these podcasters, but they're all lovely people, so what's to hate? Speaking of the crochet rabbit hole, I just want to take a moment, and um, Emma from the Potter and Bloom podcast talked about this in her podcast, about how many knitters and well, just knitters in general. I was going to say knitting podcasters, but then they're obviously knitters. How many knitters have um, picked up the hook? And I love it. I There's always been, because I've been on Ravelry for ages and I've been in like the crochet world um, online for a while, there's always been a bit of like crocheters can't knit, knitters can't crochet, these worlds are like this and I like that they're becoming like this now and like this and they're like this and oh. cuz you know it's all we're all making bits of strings from hooks and sticks you know and it makes me so happy to see so many um, knitters starting to crochet and crocheters starting to knit and it's so much fun um, I watched Andy did a podcast she uploaded last night which is probably why I'm tired because I watched it all I didn't I didn't mean to watch it all and then I did um with Sue from Legacy Knits 
and this is Andre Sunitz. Um, Andy has fallen into the crochet rabbit hole hard and has started making doilies and whatnot and I'm couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier that so many knitters are starting to crochet. <sighs> Just means I have to have a doily along in January or February or in the summer. I don't know. I want to get on board and do the doily along before anyone else does it. <laughs> um, and thank you to those of you who recommended knitting a uh, crochet podcast to me, sorry, last week. I haven't had a chance to check any of them out yet, but I will definitely be doing that in a new year. And yes. So that is all I think I have to say about my crochet and knitting and yarn related things. Now I'm just going to talk about my YouTube channel a little bit and about my life and what I've been up to. So if that's not something you're interested in, thank you very much for watching this far and I hope that you have a very Merry Christmas uh, or whatever holiday you happen to be celebrating. Have a fantastic festive season. Let's go with that. Um, I'm Christian, therefore I do the whole Christmas shebang. Um, but yes, now let's get on to YouTube things and life things. First up, first up, my YouTube videos that I've posted this past fortnight. I've got two of them. The first one is for a granny stripe blanket. I talked to you about how to make a granny stripe blanket and how to get started on it and whatnot. I thought it was relevant seeing as so many knitters and crocheters are starting these scrappy blankets and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit annoyed isn't the word, frustrated that this all came about after I'd already started my memories, cozy memories blanket because as much as I love the cozy memories, and I do, I think it's delightful, crochet to me is so much easier but then also it's been nice this past fortnight because I haven't knitted much um, since finishing those socks because I'm in a bit of a knit, knitting limbo. It's a bit awkward. So I've asked Father Christmas for some knitting needles. I suppose this isn't the end of the knitting bit because I'm talking about it now. But I've asked Father Christmas for some knitting needles. I have a feeling they are going to be coming my way. So thank you, Father Christmas. Um, but it does mean that I can't really cast anything on because I'm, I am without the sufficient needles. But I'm going to be um, popping over to my neighbour's house today, hopefully time dependent, to wind up some yarn. And if I don't have time to go today, then I will just take the skeins of hanks of yarn with me and be like, Mum, can you help me wind this? And she will, because it's my mum. Anyway, and then the other tutorial I have, because I've been on such a yarny kick, is for this little guy. Um, and it's a super long tutorial but it's a good one and hopefully makes sense. Um, the tutorial is for people that already know how to crochet, but maybe don't feel confident reading a pattern, like just reading a pattern and like to have visual aid to go along with reading the pattern or um, an audio description of what to do in the row. Yeah? Um, I don't talk you through step by step, as in, because basically, Without the footage, without me speeding up and editing the footage down, this video was two hours long, and that wasn't even with me making everything. I cut, I cut parts out as I was recording. So, yeah. I've had a few people requesting more beading tutorials, and I will be doing that in the new year. I've had a few people still requesting Christmas tutorials, and unfortunately. I will be and not be uploading any more videos until I can't make any promises. I need to quickly check the date. Um, basically, I'm going back to England tomorrow or today. No, I'll say tomorrow. I'll post this. I'll post this on Wednesday. Going back to England tomorrow for Christmas because yay! Um, and we are flying back on the fifth of January, which is a Thursday, which is usually when I'm meant to be posting another podcast. So. I don't think I'll be posting it that Thursday and I'll try and do it um, the Thursday after. So I'll be back with another podcast on the 12th of January and I will, fingers crossed, hope, hope, not making any promises, but hopefully I'll be able to get a tutorial up on the 8th of January. But if not, sorry. 
Um, but yes, I will be back with some more beading tutorials and maybe some more friendship bracelet tutorials and whatnot. Um, I've just been on such a yarn kick lately and I really love it. For now, life thing. Um, I've been exploring the Christmas markets thoroughly. When I last spoke to you, my parents had just visited and I finally have been sent some photos, so I popped them in at the beginning. And also, when I last podcast, I said that my one of my friends was coming out the next day, and she did with her boyfriend, and we had a lot of fun, and I drank a lot of glue vine, and it was enjoyable. I saw a little bit of snow when my parents visited, I can't remember if I talked about that last week or not, like not enough snow for it to mean anything, but a little bit of snow. And then, yeah, so my friend visited, and that was lovely. And, oh, we went to a Christmas jumper party, which was delightful. Um, while they were here, that was really nice. Nice, nice and chilled out. Um, I don't know, it's just been a bit quiet. So, um, I'm not into sports at all, on a side note. It's not something that I've ever shown great interest in. Um, I enjoy watching rugby because um, rugby players have nice legs. I will be that female and be like and say that. But um, my boyfriend's got into watching American football, which I understand about 50%. I understand what they're trying to do. I just don't understand whenever a whistle blows why things are happening and it just looks so violent. Um, these guys just look so big with their like padding, padded shoulders and whatnot. Anyway, so I'm part of a fantasy football team. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I think it's just because I didn't want to be left out. And we go and watch football on a Sunday in a sports bar. And it's just a wonderful excuse for me to eat chilli cheese fries. And if you um, follow me on Instagram and you see my Instagram stories, then I usually post about them. And I love chilli cheese fries. Anyway. But it just gives me a purpose to be there and to watch it and to root somebody on. Even though everyone's just like, oh, I can't believe that I've got them on my team. And I'm just like, I don't know who I have on my team. I can't remember until somebody tells me a person and then I fixate on them for the rest of the time. Anyway. So I'm in the final of my fantasy football team. Me, Hannah, knows nothing about American football or any of the players, is somehow in the final. And also the other girl who's in the final with me has about the same stance as me with American football. As in, we enjoy it, but we don't know much, we don't know enough about it to be like, oh my god, I love it, I understand it so much. Um, because we don't. So that just goes to show that um, the less you know, the better. <laughs> and I didn't even draft my own team. My boyfriend drafted my team for me, so I bet he's super annoyed because I haven't swapped my players around once because I didn't realise you could until about two weeks ago. Now I'm committed to them and they feel like my little family and um, my team is called The Corner of Crush and I'm crushing it. So yeah, it's the tenth final on Christmas Eve. So I need to set my line up today. Exciting times. Anyway, um, so yes, that is all that's really been going on. Um, I don't really think I have anything else to tell you. I will be continuing to post to like Instagram and social media and whatnot whenever I can and keep you updated that way but I just won't be posting on YouTube so if you are interested in staying up to date with my life and what goes on then feel free to follow me on social media all of the links are in the description box below as well as the link to the crafty chat podcast group and yeah I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and festive season, regardless of what you celebrate. If you don't celebrate anything, I just hope you have a lovely couple of weeks until I see you next time. It's all I ever want anyone to have is a lovely few weeks. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button just below the video. It really, really helps out my channel and gets my video out there to more people. And as YouTube is my current full-time job, um, the more people that watch my videos, the better, basically. Also feel free to leave a comment down below, just let me know anything, really. 
it's just nice. I like having a chat with you. This is why I call it the crafty chat, because I'm having a chat with you, not at you, but with you. Just let me know what you're up to, things you've been making, blah, 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 blah. All of the show notes, basically anything I've talked about, um, even though it's written on the bottom of the screen, will also be posted over on the Ravelry group, so be sure to check that out. And yeah, I think that's everything I have to say. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful festive season, and I shall see you in 2017. I shall see you next year. <laughs> that sounds so funny. Oh, I'm ridiculous. I'm so ridiculous. Hey everyone, it's Hannah, and it's time for another Crafty Chat. Welcome to episode three of the Crafty Chat podcast. And I need to try really hard to stop looking at the viewfinder and actually start looking at the camera lens. But I'll get there. <laughs>